You fill up the frame with feelings, energy, discovery, and risk, and leave room enough for someone else to get in there. Ultimately, photography is about who you are. It's the truth in relation to yourself, and seeking truth becomes a habit. Hey, welcome to the Street Shots Photography Podcast. This is Antonio. And this is Ward. And this is episode 169 for the middle of what? Middle of October? <laughs> middle of October. Middle of October. Middle of October, yeah. And uh, yeah, where there's something different going on. I have no idea. I think there's something some very kind of weird action going on there's, i don't know there's a uh, spooky action at a distance no well, not, a, not much distance it's a spooky not spooky action at distance this is a uh, familiar actions at close-up <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are we trying to say people what it's, are we trying to say guess what everybody we are in uh ward is actually sitting across from me about three feet yeah how did that happen I, I, and in my oh, living yeah. room your living room. We're yeah. sitting here with uh, some audio equipment, looking rather, I don't know, professional in some way. So, um, yeah, but and some, there's some cats nearby. I, I suck. Yeah. I've seen cats around here the last couple of days. Yeah. So Ward is actually in my apartment. Is come all the way. Um, what time is your flight tonight? You have to go back. <laughs> not, it's not tonight. <laughs> it's not, to, it's not for a few days. Yeah, he's here in uh, New York visiting and staying with me for the week. Uh, yep. Yeah, so you popped in last Monday. Yep. And you're staying until next Monday. Until next Monday. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so we thought we would do a show uh, in my living room. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> so it's far. going fine. And, uh, yeah, we have all new equipment going on here. So Yeah, and I uh, so saw you struggle with it and everything, and it uh, sounds pretty good. It's a struggle? So. It was a struggle, yeah. Uh, you made some noise. I know. You know I tried. If, if the beginning sounds a little different, because we're doing things a little different, then we might. Anyway, it's it's this is all new to me. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. I'm I'm envious. As a kid, I always wanted to do radio and stuff like that. And so this is I'm, I'm getting to live a dream here. Yeah, a little you bit. Got sliders and buttons, sliders, and cables. Yeah. Sliders are the best. Yeah, they look like the uh, Star Trek Enterprise's transporter. It was always going to come to that. Was going to be someone's <laughs> going to get beamed out. <laughs> I better not dial them down, right? Because otherwise one of us is going to leave the room. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, yeah, um, you are here for the week and uh, staying with me, and we're having a blast. This is the first time I've met you in person. That's right. In Like, we, for a minute, thought neither one of us were real. That's right. And it was sort of like, you know, I get out of the cab and like, oh, he's real. And yeah. he's looking at me going, oh, yeah, you're real. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. That's good. Yeah, we, we for a little while we thought we were the same person. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> talking to each other from different times and places. You know. Yeah, yeah separated. Uh, but anyway, welcome. Well, I'm so happy to have you here. And I am, I'm over the moon to be here actually because this has been a bucket list since I was quite young to come, to come visit New York City and to photograph New York City. Yeah, and and. Uh, I get to show you around, and I also sort of get the week off. Although you know, I'm a semi tour guide, right? We're, yeah. we're showing well, you are giving me great tours of Brooklyn. We were driving all over today. That was great. Yeah, we were in Coney Island today. Coney Island, so yeah. The weather was a bit not so great, but um, and, and Coney Island is not a happening place now. I'm fine with things not being happening. Yeah, but the uh, past two days, the f you came here on Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art to see the, um, what is it, the Burned and Hilla Besher sure. exhibit. And remember, we had mentioned that in a previous episode that I had gone seen that show. And I think we, I think we talked about uh, you coming here and doing, we would do a sort of a deep dive on them. So that will be perhaps our next episode. But uh, we went to this show and then we walked down Central Park West and uh, ended up someplace in downtown, uh, midtown New York. Yeah, midtown. And then we got on the train and we, we came back. It's very, yeah. very cool. And then yesterday we did a whole walk from Chinatown uh, 
or, or Lower East Side, I should say, through Chinatown, and I won't ne- mention the neighborhoods because uh, there was ultimate many neighborhoods, and we ended up walking about nine miles through yeah. roughly downtown New York. Um, a lot of areas where I had spent time growing up, so I was able to... Yes, yeah, so it was meaningful for you, and it was meaningful for me seeing it. You were, you were returning to it and me seeing it for the first time. Yeah, yeah. It was and pretty cool. As I told you this morning, I was having sort of this quite... Uh, um, I don't know, replay of my life uh, mm-hmm. from early times to later times. And I never had, I haven't had that experience in a while walking through. I don't go into the city that much. So I don't go really reminiscing if I'm going to the city, I'm doing something, but to, yeah. because you're there and I'm giving you a show and I want to take you through the areas where I think that you might have um, a good success in photographing yeah. on the street. And thank you for that because it was all good advice. Yeah. And it worked out. We, you know, the city or you know the street's going to be busier over here you know don't have to go over here and uh, i know mark ryerson and i used to pick the sunny side of the street or not the sunny side of the street and we you know we'd adapt and walk where we thought there'd be more people and worked out great yeah and, and pretty uh, happy with the pictures i've been getting so far are you i am yeah well there's some uh, some adjustments i will make but that's part of this project um you know i said before when we were out i think or maybe it was here about how this New York, I'll call it a project, is reminds me of Mexico because I would upload the pictures at the end of the day and look at it and see what I'm getting and what I intend and if there are any patterns that are kind of not really productive or I don't think are interesting, I can make those corrections for the next time I go through. Mm. So that's what I'm finding and it's working it's working to plan so far. Well, that's great. I'm glad that's happening. And for me I haven't really gone all out into the world to do sort of deliberate street photography. I right. think I've been putting that sort of on a side burner, I'd say not in the back burner, but just the street photography and me, I don't want to say taking a break, mm-hmm. but maybe taking a break. I don't know. Um, and so this gave me the opportunity to sort of uh, shake off a little bit of the dust on that um, on that skill mm-hmm. and, and walk around with you and, and, uh, and get that, New York feel. Actually, I don't do street photography in the city that much. If I'm doing it, it's always you know most of my it's stuff is in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, and yeah. it's and and as I told you, it was mostly uh, in my neighborhood and certain limited streets. You know, I, mm-hmm. I don't sort of go to a different neighborhood and start walking around and doing street photography. Everything is just sort of happen right. stance as I as I'm going to work or going to the train or going shopping or something like that. And so to actually go into the city into these neighborhoods that we, we, um, we move through and, and be deliberate about doing photography, uh, and especially street photography or just, you know, noticing stuff. It was just, that's a new experience. So it was double for me. It was shaking off the little dust right. and, and, um, uh, in, in, in just going someplace that I, ju- I usually don't go. You know? yeah. So, uh, I think for me, my, my images, I could see at the beginning, <laughs> Yeah, it's the, you know, we started first thing in the morning. Well, not first thing in the morning, but we got there early, mm-hmm. and we literally stayed. I think until uh, I don't know if we stayed until dusk. We were it was getting dark. It was getting dark, it was but getting we were dark. losing the light by the time we yeah. had come back to Washington Square Park, right? It yeah, starting to go. And so, or no, uh, so it was Flatiron. We walked flat all iron, down yeah. the Flatiron District, and then circled back around. Yeah. Well, it's what, I, I should have GPS it so we could have seen. The Seen the the if you have Google uh, if you have Google location turned on maybe you might be able to I don't I don't have because I don't don't want Google on my phone exactly well (laughs) if it was turned on it'd be there but it doesn't matter but um, uh, I noticed by the time I was getting through the day that the um, the dust the cobwebs were coming out a little bit and I found the same yeah yeah that was good so so we thought we would talk a little bit about this experience. Today. I mean, we are right now, but <laughs> it's like, um, what is your, uh, I guess me interviewing you about this, but what okay. is, this is your plop down here in New York for the first time. Yes. And uh, how is it uh, in the sense of approaching it like you did in Mexico? Like uh, what's, what's the, what are the similarities and what are the differences? Let's okay. say. Okay. So the similarities are you have a kind of preconceived idea of what you think the city is based on movies and other photographs um, from other photographers, and you get here, and it's, like, really not like that at all. The uh, the number of people that get on and off the train, how the train stations are, like, just, just the practical, physical 
aspects of of being here mm-hmm. are not what I thought, but I didn't re- I didn't, had no real frame of reference. So there's that the practical consideration of that. Um, also, uh, the amount of space I had this kind of fantasy or some this idea that you you know you couldn't walk. It was like you were at um, you know, like it was a continuous rush hour or something, and that you'd be bumping shoulders <laughs> with it. You know, it's, it's a rush it's, hour. It's, it's a, a yeah, 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 yeah. And it wasn't that at all. It was like in many it's other like American weird cities Star Trek, I've been in. Some yeah. weird Star Trek episode. Everybody's pressed <laughs> up against the glass. Like, yeah, <laughs> or uh, THX one one three eight. Yeah, where yeah, There's yeah. the outside border where everyone's like rushing yeah. on. Yeah. It was not. It was not like that at all. So you had time to walk and consider and. And do your thing, like start shooting. Do your do the shoot the way you know. I had always shot with like with Mark Ryerson in downtown Calgary. Start there, find subjects. And there's such diversity of humanity down here. Um, it was uh, it was amazing. I could find people from ha- half a block away and kind of scope them out. And as they got closer, things got more interesting. And uh, I could. Uh, I could photograph them or photograph uh, people intersecting or going in different directions, kind of a cubist thing. Well, all these different things that are happening, they happen at a much greater frequency than they do where I'm from. So that was uh, com- that was completely enjoyable. And I, w- I did have many periods of time where I was in flow, um, mm. where I had 10, 15-minute periods where completely nonverbal, just walking, looking over here, looking over there. I think I only got noticed once, or at least to the point that we could hear over here that said, what are you taking a picture of me for? You know, or something like that. Uh, yeah. There's only one subject that actually saw that I was doing it and then had said something about it. She didn't say anything back. She was just wondering, like, why are you taking a picture of me? Um, other than that, it was, uh, it was great. I'm finding... Um, you know, the, the number of subjects that I'm shooting, the yeah. frequency is uh, quite a bit higher, I think, than Mexico. In Mexico, I was in a small city, and there were fewer people. Mm. Uh, and I tended to camp out at locations that were had uh, something interesting architecturally about them. Um, in New York, it's sort of all, that all the time. Um, so I could keep moving. You and I could keep moving all the time. Yeah. And I didn't have a sense that I know. Mark Ryerson used to do this quite a bit where he'd be in one location and people would walk by and he would catch he would catch people as they're walking by or in his case he would ask them to take their portrait. Yeah, there was no, there was nothing like that here. It was just well, go at least go not, go. Not yet. I mean, it's not like a couple of more well, days. I don't know, what, you know, how we would approach that. I don't know if it'll, the same thing could happen, but um. yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, it's been amazing. And so I've got uh, and in fact I've been dreaming about it like uh, the pictures that I've taken and um that's nuts. <laughs> no, it no, isn't. no, really, I do you that. Did that? No, I was like that in Mexico too. Really? It's like, yeah, where it's like, wow. like I was going back to locations I'd been before and shooting. Um, that's why I did that. Um, no, it's just well because it's a it's a, a, an intense experience doing that, wanting to do it, planning to do it, thinking about it for months. Right? I mean, we planned. I planned, you know, kind of personally to be here. You know, knowing about it since I booked the flight. Right. So. I was looking at New York books at home and oh, really trying to size things up. Yeah, and thinking really, about it. Yeah, getting into the, um, I don't know, seeping yourself into the. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm trying not to look like and sound like a dork, although I, I didn't. <laughs> it's funny because we're both walking around the streets, and actually, for, I was telling you, um, for me, I it was fun, and it still is, to walk around my own city. Mm-hmm. I consider New York my city because it's where I grew up, as a tourist. Like mm. totally approaching it as, and I, I think both of us looked very touristy in some yeah. way, you know, with our with our short suit shirts on and our baseball hats and the cameras wrapped around our necks, and mm. which is the, in some way it could be some advantage, you know, because everybody's sort of used to tourists walking around, you know, looking yeah. and, and taking pictures of stuff. Except for one woman was saying, "What the hell are you taking a picture of me for?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like, um, what are, what are you finding? Or what were you finding the differences of? Uh, between here and and, and your in your other trip and and the other thing I want you to talk about well, you're already talking about it but you, you dive into this like you're doing a deep dive yeah it's like you're not just popping into the city like you said you're dreaming about it you're re- you're reading books about it ahead of yeah. time so you already have some sort of uh, you know you're you're sort of ahead of the game in some sense so how is there what are the differences are there any 
Well, the, well, there are. Like, I, and I had said during the show when I was talking about the trip that I went with my son to Vancouver in 2021. They don't. Uh, people here don't care if you photograph them, or they're even just not even aware that you're photographing them. In Vancouver, we found that people just really didn't care. You could shoot them or not. They didn't really even acknowledge. Here, they might acknowledge you or might not, but they don't care. You, you are not. You don't feel like you're, uh, you're invading a privacy or whatever. And the way I shoot is not, is not a Bruce Gilden in your face firing a flash off. It's kind of stealthy. Camera turned sideways or camera at the hip or you know hanging off, um, you know, just below chest level. And uh, me imagining where the frame lines are and, and shooting and trying to capture a moment of interaction between people, either physical interaction or a family together, for instance. There's a, a picture, the first picture I posted on social media was a family with two bored teenage daughters sitting on a bench um, at the Central Park Zoo. And um, that, that's a really meaningful picture for me for a couple of reasons. It was very close and you were uh, very close to a place where uh, Larry Winogrand stood and took a picture of um, that interracial couple that holding the uh, holding the chimpanzee. Chimpanzees, yeah. And um, and it's like the bench is like right steps away from yes, where that picture yeah. was taken, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so I'm like, and and, and the the uh, phrase that came to mind was you know primate behavior. <laughs> so <you> know, <laughs> the primate behavior of the bored teenage daughter. Did you name it? Did you name that? No, name I mean, no, I you called should. it family. I just oh. called it family. Um, I, I can change I, that it. Would, hey, that would be an inside joke too. Would, like, yeah, who would, would get be, that? People would like, yeah. what are you talking about? Well, yeah. anybody who listens to the show will now know. Yeah, if you look at my social media, in, uh, it's on Vero and on uh, Ward Rosen Photography on Facebook. The first picture I posted is this family sitting on the bench, and the two daughters are showing their boredom in two different ways. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was kind of that was the first. You know, I would call it a ringer or one where it's like. Okay, it's a combination, and it's good for Winter. Well, another connection to Winogrand is they're sitting on a bench, and my favorite Winogrand picture is uh, oh, that the World's sh- Fair, nineteen sixty four, and that was a New York picture, and the people was, sitting on the bench, the, yeah. the three or four people, yeah, yeah. The, well, the, I think there's five or six five, oh. women in different poses, and they're bookended by two men, yeah, um, yeah. and it's just a wonderful live uh, living picture. And so, I mean, I only got four people, and they're all in the same family, but there was an, an interaction and an energy to it that you know, ties me and us to Winogrand. Yeah. So I'm very happy. When you were in Mexico, did you have any of that kind of with other photography in your mind, like other photographers' work? I d- yeah, no. I, w- I went in kind of blind, and, uh, uh, you know, I'd, I saw pictures uh, and, and looked at Google Street View images of yeah. the architecture and stuff and when i got there it was much more vibrant and humanity filled it up so much i was really overwhelmed that first day uh-huh. and it took me um kind of a, that that first night of processing in my head and i'm sure dreaming about what i was going to do next and then i settled down and then i just went back into my you know my calgary street jibe and then as i uploaded i looked and said like, okay i'm doing this not as strongly yeah, as I yeah. could, and then oh, here's some opportunities over here. I could use the architecture more. I don't just have yeah. to use it as a backdrop. I can have it dominate and have show the people for scale and all those kind of things that I wouldn't normally do mm. because the architecture was that Spanish colonial, you know, eight, early 1800s. Yeah, you know, when when we got off the train and we're I, our first stop was I mean, sort of Lower East Side, China, at the edge of Chinatown. Did you have this any kind of overwhelming? feeling as well or was it no it actually was from no it was familiar Familiar? it was like let's roll let's walk yeah okay and then is it because of the city it's urban it's yeah and it's it's not completely i was kind of struck by how the same it is and that's what i was saying about Mm. washing away these kind of new york stereotypes um and and the energy the the speed with which people walk here quite a bit faster than (laughs) in calgary i love that yeah I, yeah. i knew that was coming um, so that was good. Well, it, it's a practical purpose too, and that they're out of the way. So, p- people that you don't, or that you're finished shooting, or that uh, didn't attract your interest, go away, and they're replaced by others. And so there's this, you know, over and over again, looking, looking, looking. Oh, here comes somebody else. Is that interesting? And whatever. And then between that and then the navigation that we were doing, we get to a corner, 
And, um, you know, and I said at one point, you know, you don't know whether you're going to go through the intersection or you're going to turn one direction or another. And with Mark and I in Calgary, it was like, well, where's the turn signal or where's the, the walk signal? You know, let's just Which go one's that available? Way. Yeah. Which one's available? Yeah. And you, you were great in helping helping me navigate to say, well, you know, this one's going to peter out after this block. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm seeing street signs that I know from movies. And it was like there was a whole bunch of, you know, meeting the the legend of of uh of new york city versus the actual being there yeah and that you're in it and that oh yeah this is uh, i don't i don't mean it in, in a degrading way but oh it's a city so it's you know in a lot of ways like every other city so whatever's in front of me is what i should capture and yeah. so that's what i've been doing and because of the energy of the people in the city that is different than any of course and i don't travel as much as many people um it is its own thing and i'm glad to be here to capture it and that's really what i'm here and it's doesn't feel like what i thought it might but the whole idea of coming here mm-hmm. and experiencing it is you have your experience of being here mm-hmm. and right, that's right. that's the most important thing and you're expressing your creativity you're discovering something about yourself um, as you're as you're doing the work i did notice when i started seeing your pictures pop up on my feed and facebook because i'm not on instagram anymore but well no i stopped posting to instagram oh you did the last picture i have on instagram is my vero profile oh okay well anyway i it, may go back but okay. right now i'm not well that's good to know it's, uh, uh solidarity to vero yeah. <laughs> yeah um but for me seeing uh the picture of the four people on the bench and uh even though i knew you had taken that yeah. but there was a there was i say like i mentioned this this to you that it was a very distinctive style but yeah and, that, I, and, and I i was having trouble with that i'm like well all i funny. know is what i can do and everyone's saying oh this is so you you know this is this is a picture other people said take. that too no yeah. no no, no well, but in, you, in other in other circumstances yeah. that's a word picture and i'm like yeah. okay it, i, I it, can't see it i just yeah. know that the way i choose my subject and the way i edit is the way i do it yeah well I that's good i mean you're, you're obviously being consistent within yourself. I mean, I know when I'm going through my, my current, well, this was happening on Instagram because, you know, we're scrolling up and down and we're looking yeah. at pictures one at a time kind of fast. And I think what happens for me is that I'm often seeing the picture first before I see the name. Yeah. Right. And often I will, more often than not, I, I'll see a, let's say a black and white picture and in part of my brain is clicking. It's you. Mm-hmm. And then I'll scroll back, and I'm like, "Yeah, see, I was right." Yeah. <laughs> I was That's like looking good. at the picture, That's and, good. and so the picture of the people on the bench, and further on there was the shot. Um, uh, that was the first one you posted. Then you posted pictures. Uh, the picture of the um, the little boy who got hurt on his right. That was the second day. That, that was the second here. day. That was yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Um, that one not as much. Well, it was a unique subject. It right? was a unique subject. It wasn't much, but then you uh, had a photograph of a woman. Uh, sitting in an outdoor cafe and the right. um, the waiter, it, all dressed in black, mm-hmm. is sort of covering half the frame and she's mm-hmm. looking up. And again, I knew it was you, but I could see the style. There was something about, I mm-hmm. mean, I, you know, obviously there's a style in your processing. Mm-hmm. and But there was something about that capture and the way the frame is divided by the, the bright, um, her f- bright face. Yeah, she's and lit pretty much directly. Somewhere. Yeah, she yeah. is. And then, and then the dark, uh, you know, detail. There's detail in the dark yeah. outfit of the um, uh, the waiter. Mm-hmm. And again, it's is very dis- distinctive style. And it's interesting because it's easy for me to see in other people sometimes, yeah. but not all the time. Like with street photography, I, I can certain people. It's a little more difficult for me um, in terms of style, like like a Bruce Gilden or something like that is so you obvious. Can see, yeah. Um, but, you know, other photographers, sometimes, it, 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 you know, it's a wide angle on the street and and, and sometimes like, okay, well, it, it can look very similar. And that happens with my pictures, too. I think mm-hmm. that can look like, you know, I don't know, just anybody. But as with these stuff that you're posting, and I think because you're, you're actually spending some time picking the picture. You yeah. Know, like really spending time picking the picture. Yeah. Um, yeah that's part of, part of the stick. Yeah. And I was going to say the other difference between here and Mexico. I mean, we're only we only have a sampling of two. Yeah. But in this case, uh, I'm giving you. No, I'm sort of giving you a tour, but you're with me in an right. area that I'm familiar with. And mm-hmm. you know, like you said, I'm you know this street. You know, if we go this way, we're going to lose right. people, and it's yeah. not as interesting. If we go this way, so there's a a bit of a guidance there uh, yeah. from somebody. And uh, 
you know, you're going to have tomorrow uh, mm-hmm. is going to be, uh, since tomorrow I have a job to go to right. all day long, you're going to be on your own. Mm-hmm. So you'll have your opportunity to go and, uh, you know, without guidance, right. um, see what's going to happen. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting when that, you know, um, that role of film comes up. Right, comes back. Yes. Yeah. So, how many roll of, rolls of film did we say? The well, you shot. I you shot. Yes. Like uh, it was close to forty. Yeah, right? 40, 40 47 forty, forty-seven, or something, yeah, something like uh, that. Yeah. We. Yeah. I like to equate sometimes digital. I'm still in that in that mindset of like, wow. If I had, if these were the film days, although I know for the, the film days, I wouldn't be going. You know. But I'm I'm not. I'm you know I'm firing one off. Well, I do two twos and threes. Yeah, but still okay. But as people are converging, yeah, shoot two two or three frames. I was noticing for me like to to go into my practice a little bit, but boy, I was missing shots, and it comes from. Not remembering, like the the field of view of my lens, right, so, so easily. And again, I'm doing. I always do shots from the hip or the or the waist. You know, I'm, yep. I'm, and and never believe I'm getting. You know, two thirds of the picture is sky yeah. or the tops of buildings, and the bottom and this is the head. And yeah. you know, that's fine. I'm not beating myself up. I don't think I should get worried that you know. But uh, you know, most shots were missed. And also working with, uh, I was working with autofocus, uh, not zone focus, which I usually right. work with on my smaller camera because mm-hmm. I like I nail the shots. So I don't have to worry about it. It's like right. a point and shoot. This one I was using a different camera with an autofocus lens. And I think I, the, the bunch of things coming together that right. that were making it a little trickier. I think by the end of the day, I got I got it figured out. And you were saying, you know, point at their belly button. Or, yeah, or point at their navel. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I was realizing when I, when I actually was aware to do that, uh, my hit count uh, went up. Went yeah. up. Um, not everything was great, you know. Again, maybe out of focus or something like that. But mm-hmm. I started getting some better things. But it, it you know, I, I in a sense playing multiple roles. Roles mm-hmm. like I know I'm showing you stuff. I'm pointing stuff out. And like I said, well, as and you're rel- re- reliving your past life too which right is which i didn't ex- like i said amazing I didn't expect. profound thing to witness yeah i did not expect that um yeah. because we literally went through time we went through a younger time all the way to a sort of uh I, I, if i peg it was like my um yeah my uh my uh divorce <laughs> from mm. growing up to my divorce so yeah, yeah i want to uh i want to i want to thank you for that uh, and I want to thank you for leading me around and getting me familiar with uh, uh, with the city and the trains and everything. I'm really looking forward to getting in the train and changing trains and doing all that stuff. And maybe getting lost. If I get lost, I'll get found again. Oh, well, don't get we lost. Get we, yeah, <laughs> we have GPS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So since we spent the we, we walked about nine miles uh, yesterday, mm-hmm. we did all the calculation. Uh, Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, I think in the past two days, in those two days, we walked fifteen, 15 miles, miles altogether. So yeah, if anything, uh, my my health app is going to be you know, hey, you did good. <laughs> the only time I get these big walks in actually is something photographic. I used to go to. Um, these auto racing weekends, right? It was the same thing. I'd get, you know, f- five five digits, you know, five digits of steps, you know, thirty thousand steps or something on a weekend, and um, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, the, there's a fitness component to it, and and you're not aware of it when you're busy, when you're actually working. You got to do what you got to do. I wasn't aware that I was walking nine miles, especially carrying a camera bag and equipment, which wasn't heavy, but like carrying other stuff. Yeah. Hey. Hey, look at that. <laughs> look at that. It wouldn't be Being my reminded house. of the city. Yeah. It wouldn't be my house if, if we didn't have a fire engine go by. But anyway, no. um, you know, if I'm doing a regular walk, you know, for exercise, I'm doing it like three miles and like mm-hmm. I'll feel it afterwards. And then this. Nine miles. I, I was actually surprised that we did nine miles, but uh, and I don't know how many pictures I took. Certainly not as I don't think I did as many as you, but you know I'm familiar with stuff. And yeah. although mm, I don't know, like I said, I don't go to the city that much, so things seem you know, unfamiliar. Like I don't spend time in Chinatown, and and photographically, um, you know, I, and it's not the people; it's just like the the atmosphere and the fabric. Atmosphere, I, well, and produce being sold on the on the sidewalk and other goods. Um, 
it was very cool because there is, there was a continuous interaction of people which you don't see uh, that I don't see in Calgary. You know, for block it's blocks and blocks of product being sold on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. And so there was a lot of stopped people, a lot of people looking this way and that way, not just trying to go from point A to point B, mm. which is what I'm I'm used to trying to deal with. This was good. People wanted to be there, and they were staying where they were. Were you thinking about getting, I mean, we were in different neighborhoods. Were you thinking about getting the feel of the neighborhoods in the pictures, or were you really just trying to get an overall New York? No, I'm just trying to work the way I work in whatever's in front of me. I don't say uh, I, what I'm trying to remember. Uh, the reason why I'm trying to remember what neighborhood I'm in is so that f- primarily for the caption to say this was East Village, this was Chelsea, this yeah. was Flatiron. Yeah. Um, that's all it was. And, and also to brag that I'd been in those neighborhoods and keep a track of that in my head. But the whole thing, the whole amount of pictures that you come out with would be my, essentially my trip to New York. It's yeah, like that's exactly. like it's not like, oh, I've been in this neighborhood and the feel this neighborhood. I mean, you notice no. that each neighborhood had a different feel. Right? Oh, it, did, it does. Isn't absolutely. it interesting? Yeah. It's like, yeah, because when I was growing up, I always felt that the different neighborhoods were almost like different countries. Mm. Like every, like mm-hmm. a sl- slightly different dialect or a slightly different di- way of doing things and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't mean that, like, you know, I can go from 26th Street to 30th Street. And between yeah. 26th Street and 30th Street, there's a different, you know, it's yeah. a different country, you know, so. It's like, what happened here? Where did yeah. all the people go? <laughs> you turn and, like, there's this row of kind of restaurants and things to do over here, and then, then nothing. We're in, uh, you know, it's all, like, office, professional building, office towers, and... and no, and then very little foot traffic. Yeah, it's fascinating. That's, that aspect of the of the city is is pretty cool. So if we can geek out a little bit. I know we don't always talk about gear too much, but I want to talk a little bit about it because sure. that's that's part of the process. I think is uh, is like what are you carrying with you? What's sure. making your job easier? And I know both of us are Fuji guys, mm-hmm. right? Which is yep. uh, um, you're shooting with. I'm shooting with two Fuji XE threes. That that's my street gear. Um, I would say ninety percent of the photographs I took were with the twenty three millimeter f two. The Fuji. Are you doing autofocus? Or are you doing? Yeah, uh, oh, you are doing autofocus with uh, yeah. face detection turned on. Yeah. Yeah, that and helps. That it helps. works. Yeah, yeah, it works about 85, 90% of the time. Yeah, I would have to say that, that you know, your, your camera also looks very innocuous. You just look like some, you know, yeah. guy from out of town with a little point and shoot, nothing well, camera. Yeah, well, we got in trouble with the Coney Island guy. That today. was different. Let's talk about that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> We got in trouble. What is we? <laughs> I, I don't know. He, 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 he pointed to me first and then oh, pointed okay. to you. He, and then I said, hey. You know, yeah, all right. Well, let's get into we'll get to it. Yeah. Um, and you find that, uh, I mean, you're, 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 um, you know your equipment well, so you know the capabilities, you know the um, uh, disadvantages of it and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, and yeah. uh, it, it's really helpful to have that um, knowledge when you're shooting. Like, you're not. Particularly when you're shooting from the hip, you have to yeah, imagine where the frame lines are going to yeah, be, yeah. so that you can. And I do crop. I'll say that up front. I'm a I'm a cropper, so I want to get close enough that I can fill the frame as best I can, and then adjust the the horizon and 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 the crop it to center it on the subject. I have a pretty good idea of how we would frame it if it's vertical you, or horizontal. Do you think so. that people judge that because that you're cropping? Like they can if they want. I mean, that's fine. Like the, if, I, if I say I crop and they, I'm not a purist. I mean, uh, Mary Ellen Mark would say that, you know, everything, you're responsible for everything in that frame, and she would only shoot where she had the full frame. Right. right. She's Mary Ellen Mark. Right. <laughs> she <laughs> so, could say what she wants. That's exactly. So I am I am me, and I, I crop. So yeah. Yeah. the point is to get the raw file that, that uh, appears in my Lightroom catalog is the raw material, like I always say, the, the lump of clay that I'm using to mold into the intention. Yeah. So this is my process. So you can, you don't have to appreciate it. That's fine. Yeah. It's fun to notice the differences between the two of us because I was, uh, you know, I'm all about uh, shooting because um, I'm shooting Fuji as well. And I, I mainly like it and do it because I'm so tired of processing generally. And mm-hmm. so I, you know, I go for the JPEG that comes out of the camera and I, I do process a little and I do crop. So I'm not a purist mm-hmm. either. Um, especially now with two thirds sky and 
<laughs> and one third head. I'm gonna have. I mean, if I get hopefully a good you get the chin in there. And then yeah, if I get there. a good shot, and yeah. you know, uh, I'll have to remember that to aim for the navel. Aim for the navel, yeah, because yeah. the 23 millimeter lens, I could probably I could catch. Actually, I was doing a good job once I did that. But anyway, the you know, I'm 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 not say I'm puzzled, but I do wonder about the the processing. Um, in pictures, like you're, you're doing your raw files, and I think that actually um, helps you to get your look better because mm-hmm. yeah, you're really, like you said, you're working with well, the, it's like the dark room. I miss yeah. the dark room, and uh, the, I mean, I have some processing, um, uh, the same kind of whatever. I move the same dials in the same way to yeah. get close yeah. to where it is, and then or close to where I'd want it, and that's like well, the lighting condition, the exposure is not exactly what. Because I am shooting with uh, uh, aperture priority, so sometimes it misses the exposure. And thank goodness, with raw yeah, files, yeah, I can yeah. I can move some things around. Um, and it, it it you know then then I try and make it look consistent with you know well, what I'm trying to pre- what I'm trying to say. Actually, that's what I was going to say is that because of what you're doing, you're ending up with a consistency. Maybe that's actually why I'm also able to peg your work mm. easier because you're consistent and because you're using with a raw file you're 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 starting with raw ingredients and mm-hmm. you're creating your meal with it right and i'm in sort of the, a little bit of the opposite because i'm very much of using the film simulations right. right and i'll mix and match my film simulations although lately with the newer cameras the newer fujis they have something called nostalgic neg Right. Negative. When you I, met, you brought it up a couple of times. Yesterday. I love that. It it, yeah. it it alters colors in, in a way. Sometimes not that I like, mm. but um, I there are times when it just there. You know, when it's just nostalgic neg, I'm like, oh, am I nostalgic? I don't know, mm. but it it has some fabric or color. But like I said, I will take the JPEG sometimes and I bring them in. I'm always bringing them into Lightroom on my phone, most likely because that's where I'm doing my processing or my iPad, and then I might apply a film preset to that in addition. Right. So I, I'll end up with some sort of Frankenstein monster version <laughs> of, 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 a, of a color processing because I'm combining the Fuji's film sim mm-hmm. with someone else. Like like I'll do, um, yeah, nostalgic negative, and then I'll bring it in and I'll get like Ted Forbes uh, Codify, Kodachromify Kod- right. uh, or something like that, and I'll take a Kodachrome version and combine them, and then it creates some third color. Mm-hmm. And so... I'm kind of always doing that. I'm always coming up with this combination and, and, and maybe in some sense make, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's an inconsistent coloration. Right. It's always something different. It's an interpretive color. And that's when I'm doing color. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm doing black and white, the black and whites are straight out of the camera. I might tweak things like a little bit well, like contrast. Or you've something. got those acro simulations on yours. So right. acro simulate. Well, you don't have those. Nope. Oh, all right. I'm, um, no, no, I just, just black have, and white. I just have black and white with, and then black and white with filters, which yeah. I never use. Yeah. I'll use an acro simulation uh, with a, gr- blah, 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 with a green filter. Yeah, a green filter. Yeah, I can see that. I wish they had an orange filter version too. But there's the an orange filter. No, it's, it's, I've it's got an orange filter. I've got a red, a gr- an orange, a yellow. No, Acros is Acros is no straight. Oh, it's got Ag- red. It's part of Acros. It's okay. got red, green, and yellow. Yellow. I think yeah, for darkening the skies. Yeah, and, and so an orange would sort of somewhat would be somewhat between red and yellow. Yeah. But anyway, orange filter would darken yeah. skin tones which would probably It looks like it looks like a good version of old time I mean whatever black and white film you use and yeah. I, I couldn't say for sure if it was an Ilford film or a Kodak film, but it's got some feel of that. Mm. And that I usually don't tweak that much. Um you know, I might like I said I might add some clarity or some you know, I want to get some right. mid-tone contrast, but it's very little tweaking. But I, essentially I'm not changing any colors, you no. know. And um so, yeah, so I end up with this conglomerate when I shoot colors. But I don't, much of my street photography, the vast majority of my street photography is black and white. I mean, I like doing, I like converting in, or uh, the color to black and white. But again, I'm still doing it with, with, with the JPEGs. Yeah, you that's know. how we do it. It's, there's no, no right or wrong. There's just the workflow that you've come to appreciate. And one that you come up with a workflow that's going to help you successfully create what your intention is, is what it's all about, however you do it. I mean, my son does JPEG straight out of camera, and he might adjust the the brightness, but it's pretty much that's it. Yeah, 
Yeah. And yeah. you're all your street. You're main, you're mainly black and white street. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. You know, for this project, I'd say it'd probably be ninety five percent black and white. Yeah. Being what you just said, are you considering this considering this a project? Yes, you are absolutely. Okay, it's a it it's coming up like a life experience, right? Okay, and so it will be a project. It's something will come of this. It's too important not to. Mm. Too important not to do something to put all the effort. And you see me like I was kind of wiped today because yeah, the, yeah. it wasn't physically because I had been walking around. Although I got a bit of a blister on on my big toe or whatever, but it's not that. It's the um, leftover um, kind of let down after the intensity of yesterday right, right. and absorbing all of that kind of stuff. So that's one thing you'll find with me is like I'm on or I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> There's no in between. <laughs> Well, luckily, in some way, today was an off day because it was rainy or gray. Yeah. You actually, do you like shooting in? in I'll shoot in, in anything. anything just, yeah. The only thing with rain is the, my cameras are not water, water, yeah, water resistant. So, but it was okay. We did what we did today. Right? Oh, it was perfect, and the weather okay. was wonderful and cool. Yeah. and um, I, I, and I, and breathing sea air was great. Yeah. So today we took a slow morning a little bit, but mm -hmm. then we headed out to... I didn't set my alarm. Sorry about that. Say, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you had coffee when you woke up, right? You yeah. Were, we, we had coffee, and then we drove down to Coney Island, which is not far from where I live. It's just pretty much of a straight drive. And uh, we parked, and Coney Island now is, uh, is seasonally closed down. Like, there's nobody there. And, of course, this is a weekday anyway. And the mm -hmm. weekends will we'll probably pick up. There'll be people there. Mm -hmm. The amusement park, Luna Park, is still open. Um, right. I don't know when they close. My, I, I'm going to assume they may. Actually, I wonder if they stay. Some of the rides stay open in the winter. I don't want the Wonder Wheel, the Ferris Wheel. I can imagine going on that when it's when winter. it's cold. You got to sit on that cold metal. Yeah, I, no, they probably <laughs> they, they probably close. They they got to close down anyway. It's <laughs> gray sky, kind of you know wispy. Whip, ripply clouds. Um, there are people out there. We came across a school group that was out on the pier. Mm -hmm. uh, we walked around on the boardwalk. Everything on the boardwalk is closed. Yeah. Even Nathan's, all the Nathan's were closed. Yeah. Actually, the there's Nathan's. a couple of other Nathan's stores just out on the street, just outside the yeah, park those too, the, that were open. There were a couple, yeah, yeah. That, making some money. And yeah. but the but the amusement park was open. I, I brought today my medium format camera. Um, because I want to do something different. Plus, to me, I'm starting to approach certain kinds of subject matters with that camera. Like, I think we're having some sort of interesting relationship. The mm -hmm. camera is drawing me to do certain things and certain subjects. Like, I, I don't think I would shoot Coney Island with my small cameras right now. It's, it it oh, to okay. me feels it feels like big picture, flat. Quiet. I don't know. That's what mm. that's what that's what the GFX uh, medium format camera is right. starting to do for me. It's starting to bring that part out a lot different. I wouldn't use the obviously. I wouldn't. I, for me, I would not use that camera for doing street photography. It's right. It's not the appropriate camera. You could do it, but it, it, it somehow requires for me a slowness. Right. And today, being that we were coming off of two days of walking and you know bumping into lots of people, this is kind of nice to like. Okay. Yeah. You know, cleanse the palate. Yeah, cleanse the palate. So, walking around with this, um, uh, and for you, just a chill. I, I a chill pretty day. much, I pretty much disengaged. I mean, I got some pictures of that tall structure with the, that used to be the parachute, the parachute ride. drop. Yeah, parachute drop is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah. It's the Eiffel Tower of Brooklyn. It's been okay. <laughs> okay, take your word for that. <laughs> Actually, if we go there at night, I don't know if it's on at night, but they they. They've wired that whole thing up with LED lights, and so oh. they can create a light show. On well, there was night. music playing from the PA, yeah. like around it. So. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so I was I didn't really have my uh, my Fuji's out very much. There was no um, people. I mean, it was well, like no, that's fine. I, I'm fine with it uh, being open, but I'm doing the, you know for the formal uh, pictures of things, of signs, gates, um, that tower. Uh, some people, uh, the patterns along the boardwalk, you know, the very long run of wood <laughs> that goes yeah, along yeah, that beach. Yeah. It's really long. And um, a little bit, a little bit of a seascape. I'll see what I can do with those. Not when really we were out on the pier, it was not, uh, you know, and there's some container ships that were leaving. and But not fitting into the overall project, really. So no, no, just, just, a, just a, a different, a, using the other brain, the other side yeah, of my brain yeah. to 
to chill out. And we both discovered our phones worked really well there too. Yeah, so yeah. That was a that was kind of a, an epiphany. I want to call it that. It was just like, oh, I can just do this and maybe turn in this picture of the tower into a tintype or something. Like <laughs> just play with it. It was it was good play, and it was nice to have you know the down day. Um, and do you find that around. important? A little bit. Like I, well, I think the older I get. I mean, I, when I was in Mexico, I did pick a day to be off. I still had the camera with me, and I walked around a little bit, but really it was just kind of almost like location scouting. Yeah. Again, yeah. what what oh, have I yeah, missed? Yeah. It's not like I'm, you know, it's not like I'm only there for a weekend. I have a few days, and I don't want to completely exhaust myself and and kind of curse being there the last couple of days because I think I'm out. missing anything. You yeah. burn yourself. You, yeah. you think you could? I mean, if you're like day Oh, I have no day, idea. Like, I'm oh. just afraid that I might yeah. be that. And it just seemed like, you know, I'm a big fat guy. And so I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to break, I don't want to break anything while I'm trying to uh, do this work. So because of the importance of it, I think I want to make sure that I'm in some kind of shape to be able to carry off and leave here like I did in Mexico um, content with the effort I put in shooting. Yeah. Then when I go back and I will be looking at this, these pictures for months and coming up with stuff. Yeah. I want to talk about That's that. What I, I want to talk about that part in a little bit because okay. uh, okay. you brought it up before. Some, um, I, for me, you know, I, I like the quiet moments too. Like I like, you know, going yeah. to, I, that's why I kind of chose Coney Island today because I thought, you know, I knew the weather was going to be, eh. Yeah. And, uh, you wanted to show you this other part of Brooklyn as well, which is mm-hmm. like, how can you not come to Brooklyn and not see and Coney, yeah. Coney Island? And the picture that we took of us down, the, the, it says Coney Island, you know, right. down the uh, the pathway to the uh, to the Wonder Wheel. Yeah. So we're in the park, walking around. I'm I'm actually finding lots of nice graphics, um, mm-hmm. and I also like this light. I mean, for for me, uh, overcast light is great, and Coney Island is just full of colors. The the right. amusement park location. They've painted it bright, bright colors, and I was looking for solid colors playing against each other. Mm-hmm. And again, the GFX and me have this relationship of moving slow and deliberate. Right. And so it's it. I, I again, I find I know they say the camera doesn't matter, but doesn't. But I could not take the kind of pictures that I was seeing through the lens of my medium format camera with my iPhone. It would right. not be the same. Right. And so the the equipment does matter in some respect, and the lens does matter, but but it's, again, a symbiotic relationship. Mm. And, and in a, some way, this might be weird, but in some way the camera is teaching me something. Right. You know? Um, you know, obviously this is the opposite of street photography and a, and a giant camera like that. I, I, I also have it set up so that when it takes a picture, I'm not doing multiple shots. I go, right. it goes kajunk, right? It reminds and me of my it, dad's old camera that had the semi-automatic mirror. It would just go up and stay up. <laughs> you have to advance the film before the mirror comes down. Again. Yeah. It, this, I have it, it, it does remind me of film. It, like it, I, it sort of purposely makes me take one or two pictures mm-hmm. and I'm like, like that's it. I'm done yeah. with the subject. You know, I might move around. I'm done with that angle. Yeah. Except I was trying to get that damn fish. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> this, this, the dead fish on the railing a, of the pier. Someone left a fish on the railing, and the bloody thing, the bloody camera would not, would it would just not focus on the fish. It kept focusing on the wood that was a half an inch below the fish, the, the, yeah. the wood the, the wood that the fish was lying on. And I had to do manual. Anyway, sorry. Uh, get curse of medium format, man. Yeah, focus, was, focus, focus. And then no, I'm, I think, I'm I hanging think, my phone over going, click, click, I know, you're click, doing click. this. Are you done yet? <laughs> click, click. I think it was the camera just couldn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the, it was somehow focused it on the wood. didn't have fish detection. didn't have why. fish detection. Hey, what, what the heck, <laughs> Fuji? You could have fish detection. Anyway, so finding the more flat, overall colors and actually i did get a couple of shots of people i actually kind of ran behind this older couple mm-hmm. um I, I, you started running i'm like well i'm not I'm yeah not no running. no you're not running I, I don't know if i got them but they they seemed really sweet and it was from behind they had a dog sometimes then they didn't have a dog do they did they, they had a dog well maybe no, it's a different couple a different, different couple no no okay. they kept oh I don't, anyway it doesn't matter um, One of kept, us is right they kept bumping their shoulders sort of nicely uh. and and i i, I think i'm just my circumstances and being more aware of older couples right um together and how they're how they're interacting it's just something i'm becoming aware of. but anyway i got them from the back and i got the the uh the, the 
parachute drop in the background. So mm. I just had a, I wanted to get a Coney Island film. I haven't looked at those images to see if they came out yet, but I got a few of this. Anyway, we went into we went into the amusement park area, which is you know got all the rides and stuff like that. There's nobody there except the people who work there. Yeah, uh, and we got. Um, you want to tell a little bit? You tell the first half of the story since. Well, we walked into one entrance into Luna Park, and there was a a gentleman kind of called us aside to me first, and then he was pointing at you. So I was ahead of you. So I didn't yeah, you were ahead of me, and it's like he wants to talk to us. He's he's got a a little handy talky thing. He must be part of this place. So yeah, and he yeah. came. He brought us both over, and I kind of like I do. I hover <laughs> about twenty <laughs> feet away, which you'll find me doing that all the time, trying to overhear what's going on. Yeah, and then then he's telling me because he, uh, he says he actually he said it very low, so I couldn't hear him. Okay. Yeah, he goes, yeah, I have a permit. I'm like, what? Excuse me? Did you have a permit? I'm like, no, I don't have a permit. And you can see where this is going, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, you're not supposed to shoot, you know, you didn't, uh, commercial, you know, you can't shoot with that camera. I'm like, why can't I shoot with this camera? Because that's a, pro- that's a professional camera. Uh, and I said, but I'm not a professional. And I'm not. I'm not a professional photographer. No. Or, you know, but it's a professional camera. And, and so there's a little bit of this back and forth. And I said, he goes, you can use your iPhone. I'm like, well... I, I said you can use your iPhone. I was getting. I, I was thinking about this later. It's like I'm. I'm getting to be. A, you know, in this little instance, I'm beginning to get us become a snot snotty guy. Well, I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, these people, these Americans, they're always <laughs> doing this. I wanted to. I want permission. You need. Per, you need a permit. And yeah, but, and I was like, also okay. like, I was very tempted to point to your camera and say, well, why isn't? Why aren't you, you telling have. him? You should have. Why aren't you telling him? I'm more tourist looking. And then I started thinking afterwards, when we got home, I was thinking, I started having, I started obsessing about this. And I was thinking, I was having an argument with the guy again in my head. And I was thinking, how do you know this is not a professional camera? What defines a professional camera? Like I wanted, that wouldn't have gone anywhere. It was nice to have it actually afterwards. But he did say, I'm just telling you, you know, this is my job to tell you. So, you know. So essentially he was saying, you know, I don't want to escort you out. um, But, you you know, I'm telling you that you so when we walked out, we walked by a sign that that did talk about all the rules of Luna yeah. Park, and there was a specific thing that said commercial photography, right. and I read it, and because this is my show and I get the last word, <laughs> yeah. there was nothing in that that said you couldn't you couldn't have ancillary camera equipment like tripods yeah. or ancillary video lights. equipment or lights or anything like that. There was nothing in the rule that, that defined the kind of camera that you were allowed to bring. And so right. if I had just read those rules or if I had a picture of that rule, I mean, you know, or something like that, if I was aware of it. Now that I'm aware of it next time, I not that I would want to get in an argument, but I wouldn't want to say, look, you know, your, your sign is telling me one thing. Whatever I'm doing with this camera is nothing else. I, I want to take better pictures, right? And so what the, what the heck difference does the camera make? And now th- mm-hmm. this is not a concert. Because I know when you no. go to concerts and they're oh, like, yeah. they don't want you to have interchangeable lenses. No. And that, uh, you know, sure, I understand that. That makes sense. This is an amusement park with six people in their entirety today. There's nobody there. <laughs> yeah. There's no kid. You know, there's a few kids there. We look like a couple of dumb tourists yeah. anyway, no matter what. Yeah, we can't even take pictures of a fish for crying out loud. Right. <laughs> no, I can't take pictures <laughs> of fish. You can take plenty of pictures of fish. So, yeah, it was, you know, I don't usually get those kind of run-ins. And, and I often, I don't know why I was kind of in a picky mood about that. You know, I, I don't like that. But um, I know, he's just doing his job, and, you know. But he saw us before. I yeah, was taking picture, I was yeah. I was taking pictures of the walls, and I, I actually got a picture of him as yeah. he was walking in. Walking in. Yeah, yeah, he was walking in. It's not sharp of him, but it sort of fit the framing I was doing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it was like, you know, he didn't stop us then. You know, uh, maybe we weren't in yeah. physically in the park. Maybe that was the difference. So. Yeah, because anyway, we had just walked in. Anyway, that's sort of the lesson is this to, to, to look at the rules and pay attention to the rules. And, you know, don't be, I wasn't saying I was being a dick or anything like that, but, like, you know, I I, I don't want to be the, I don't really want to get into an argument with someone. I respect everybody's doing their job and stuff yeah. like that. And I just, you know, sometimes you get into a mood, but that's the way you get thrown out. <laughs> But I'm looking forward to looking at those pictures. I like I I love shots of Coney Island. I and especially like going in off times. I don't like going when there's a ton of people there. Although I can see you I'll like you know be Mr. Street Man. Yeah, well, especially during if you came during the summer and it's a zoo here. But actually if you come here in the summer and you your 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 objective is to take photographs, 
you know, going into the to, into the crowds, um, it's fine. And the, 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 one of the biggest crowd things is the mermaid parade. And you would have, mm. I think, a field day. Of course, there's a million photographers, people doing everything. But but it's like one of those things where everybody just like lets loose. Yeah. And I think you know you could just close your eyes and take great pictures in, yeah. in that kind of environment. But anyway, I thought that with was... with all due respect to my skill as a photographer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, so we still have a couple more days left. Yeah. Um, we are going to. Uh, you're going to be on your own tomorrow. I mm -hmm. don't know what we're going to do on the weekend, but I don't know if you want to revisit any spots because the, the weekend is going to have a different vibe. Yeah. So well, that's a possibility. You'll have to. Well, I, I think. I did know, the I tour. I won't know until I know. So tomorrow for me is going to be alone in lower Manhattan. So yeah. I'll be visiting some monuments and, you know, the Chrysler Building and Empire State. and. Well, that's a different part of town. Okay. <laughs> he's looking He's looking at me like, what? Well, I guess I'll have to walk another nine miles. It's fine. I've got to do, no, no, I, I gotta do what i got to do. If you're you're going to go downtown, which is, which actually you'll have a lot of workers, you know, it's it's Wall Street and stuff like yeah. that. So you'll get that vibe. Plus there'll be, there'll be uh, tourists and whatnot. But mm -hmm. anything, the other buildings you're talking about, you're going to have to go to Midtown. Okay. So that would be a different thing. And um, lower Manhattan is, is is really dead during the weekend. It's like, like it would be like the kind of photography I would want right. to do with my GFX. I want to right. go there like quiet, no people do, you know, s nice subjects. It's okay. not, it's not, it's not, so, not the people so thing. yeah, you're not, we're not going to want to go there on, on the weekend. Okay. It'll just be dead. Uh, so anyway, you've got a couple of days to think about whether, and I won't be giving you any more tours because we just did the most significant tour that, yeah, we can't. <laughs> we can't. We can't surpass that. Yeah, I can't point out. If I could probably point out a few other things, but anyway. So, yeah. uh, and today you, you you shot so much you had to buy more cards. Yeah, so you kindly took me to the electronic store and yeah. bought a couple of sixty four gig SD cards. Mm. And you're going to fill those up too. So we can always buy more if you run out. You can always buy more. <laughs> so, anyway, we've 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 done our first live show. Or first live, our live, first live our first in person. Live in person. Live yeah. in person. Uh, and this might open up some, I, this new equipment that I've got in front of me um, might open up some possibilities for some cool things in the future. Yeah. And uh, I know we will probably be recording one more show before you go. So we'll have yep. one in the can, but that will be the uh, their deep dive or review of the uh, Besher show since the we Besher both saw show, it. Yeah. And I really want to talk to you about that because that that's a whole different vibe. Yeah, and and it's kind of the stuff we we've done before. It's like well, it's the opposite of you know, this show is talking about our own creation, our own work, and this is about uh, our best to understand uh, this couple. Yeah, um, yeah, who created this uh, amazing body of work? Yeah, of which we saw quite a bit of it. It was insane. It was, it a, was again an, an overwhelming amount of work. Yeah. But, uh, okay, with that, hey. Where can people find you when you're not in New York City? <laughs> when I'm not in New York City. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Ward Rosin Photography. Uh, I'm also on Vero at W Rosin Photo, and my Twitter handle is also W Rosin Photo. I am on Instagram at uh, Ward Rosin Fine Art, but I haven't posted there for uh, I don't know six weeks or two months. Oh, um, yeah. So, but you can see my work. You still friend me there if you like. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then I have this little business where I sell lenses and lens adapters at uh, Ornis Photo. It's O R N I S dot photo. That's our unofficial That's our sponsor. unofficial sponsor. I forgot <laughs> to say that. <laughs> I, but then I get to say it. Then you get. I say get it. to say it. I like then to. You get I like to say that as my show. Yeah. So. Cool. Thanks for coming. And uh, yeah. my pleasure, man. Yeah. It's amazing to be here. And for me, yeah, you can find me, like I said, uh, on Vero now at AM Rosario and Twitter at AM Rosario. Uh, Facebook is rosario.photo. Um, and for those of the older folks, right? This is like the AOL of the, That's <laughs> for right. the 21st century. <laughs> yeah. J join me on Facebook. And I don't have a little business to share yet, but uh, we'll see. We'll work on it. And uh, yeah, well, Ford, thanks for Thanks for coming and thanks for agreeing to do this live no. thing that we did together with all this gear. Well, I want you to put a lot of effort into getting it set up, so I'm not going to let you down okay. and you know, <laughs> have a nap while you're getting ready to go. So. Okay. And tonight's dinner is hammered. 
Hamburgers. Yeah, yay. And your hanger burgers. All right, man. Hanger burgers. Exactly. Right, well, we will see you guys in a couple of weeks. And uh, thanks for thanks for listening. See you later. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.